is from Sirkan on uh, NFE. So round of applause for, for him, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Srikant Kilaru. A brief introduction about myself. I'm uh, the product manager responsible for uh, Helion OpenStack to serve the NFE market from HP. Uh, I've uh, had the privilege of being associated with this initiative right from the get-go. So I'm uh, very pleased to uh, introduce to all of you what we are doing with regards to NFE and OpenStack. So thank you for attending. I hope you're really having a good summit, a very informative summit. Um, I'm glad to see all the interest here. So without further ado, let me jump into what this is all about, what we are doing uh, with regards to OpenStack and NFE. There's some forward-looking statements. Our legal guys uh, oblige me to have those. <clears throat> so when I talk about um, service providers and NFV, and in that same sentence when I say OpenStack, when I started out with this project, it was even a little bit unbelievable for me as well, because we all know OpenStack is still relatively in its early days. And then uh, what do carriers need if you take a quick survey, everyone would say something like five nines, six nines. Reliability is the first thing that uh, comes to everyone's minds. That's what carrier grade means. And that's, that's important. That's, that's absolutely uh, important. But we think it's more than that. It's, it goes well beyond that. And especially when you think about NFV, uh, you have to deliver on the availability uh, aspect of, of, a, of a virtualization infrastructure manager but you also have to deliver on performance. And why is that? Because you're, you're really not deploying just a web server or a, or a SAP server, but you're really deploying uh, uh, VNFs that, that have very uh, high sensitivity to latency, require high performance, uh, and, and require a low jitter. So there's, there's, a, there's a performance aspect of this whole virtualization platform or an FEI that you have to be very uh, careful about when you think about uh, uh, OpenStack environment. Then the third um, a key aspect is manageability. Now this is something that means many, many different things for different people. Uh, apart from the traditional uh, definitions of manageability in terms of ease of deployment, ease of use, there's other aspects. How do you upgrade this environment without disrupting your entire uh, service? How do you uh, make sure that this has the OAM functionality that service providers are used to uh, with, with telco-style interfaces, for example. How do you do fault management and performance management? And then how do you report it upstream? So there's a lot of manageability, usability aspects that you have to pay special attention to when you are thinking about an OpenStack environment for NFE. <clears throat> So uh, we did actually ask, or I don't think we asked, but we really talked to uh, the uh, heavy reading guys and, 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 and looked at what the polling showed with regards to open source usage in a service provider environment. And uh, regardless of the motivations or regardless of where they are coming from, 97% uh, of service providers are serious about using open source. This is no longer a science project. This is no longer a kicking the tires. This is very truly an initiative from the CXO level down to start using uh, open source based solutions in uh, the live networks. And this is uh, especially true with regards to OpenStack. <clears throat> now I don't think this is, so, uh, this is so far out there. We have seen other open source softwares really uh, pick up in terms of adoption. Uh, whether it's Linux or whether it's uh, just the pure web services based area with WordPress, PHP. So at HP, we truly believe that open source has the potential to, to reach commercial uh, uh, deployments, whether in any one of these spheres and, and now newly with uh, open source, uh, sorry, open source based OpenStack. <clears throat> And, and, and this is very important for, for, for all of us to keep in mind. That is, what is HP's position in the OpenStack project? And it will become a little bit more apparent as, as, as I talk about uh, the, the product itself. So HP is a Platinum member. It is one of the uh, 
uh, key uh, members of uh, the OpenStack community from a contribution standpoint, uh, as well as a, from a board standpoint, uh, leading number of uh, developers and PTLs. Uh, and, and we're also, you know, I would like to say we eat our own dog food by deploying it in our public cloud. And uh, we have a dedicated staff of uh, employees well beyond the engineering folks uh, who go into uh, publishing what, open, what OpenStack is about um, and uh, the, the documentation aspects, the legal aspects as well. So HP has serious commitment uh, from staffing and um, technology contributions perspective when it comes to OpenStack. And this is going to help us further the cause of NFV uh, in the OpenStack community. <clears throat> so if you look at the foundations of how we build uh, a carrier-grade uh, OpenStack product, we, we, we start with the upstream uh, OpenStack, and then we add a layer of uh, security. We make sure that it is secure. Um, inherently, the uh, upstream open source is not very secure for uh, real-world deployments, and uh, it's not very easy to deploy from a lifecycle management and configuration perspective. So HP invests in these areas, and also uh, we, we make uh, the indemnification uh, of the open source uh, possible so that you don't run into legal challenges using open source. Now that's good for enterprise. Now we need to go further to make this a platform for NFE. And this is where we, we take the attitude of how do we take a uh, open source project that has loosely coupled components, each one of them doing a particular service, and stitch them together and provide a highly available resilient framework with high performance components. And also, features that are supposedly available in a Juno or a Kilo or a Liberty release but don't really work, how do we fix them? And then help the community absorb them in the upstream. So that is the focus of Helion Carrier Grade. And I will jump into the details. I know you're all now excited about what this product is, what it can do. Uh, one of the key aspects that I should mention here is that, and again, this will become apparent why this partnership is important, uh, as the leading contributor to OpenStack and uh, with our partner, WindRiver, who's, who's a leading provider of carrier-grade Linux, which is the most uh, widely deployed platform from the network equipment provider perspective, right? So these two uh, companies have joined forces together to bring together a uh, carrier-grade platform for NFE. So looking, looking at what goes into the product, sorry. this is a functional architecture. This is not really a software architecture. Built on uh, Intel architecture, we have a software stack that comprises of the compute node. And the compute nodes are built on carrier-grade Linux. This is very important because if you look at the latest spec of carrier-grade Linux, which is uh, at revision number five, uh, there are a lot of contributors to it. Everyone under the sun that you really care about, whether it's Intel or Oracle or Ericsson, Nokia, ALU, um, all of, and, and even uh, service providers themselves have contributed to the definition of the spec. This spec enables you to have a base platform to virtualize your applications so that you have the resiliency, you have the uh, availability and, and security that is required from a, a, a Linux-based compute node. On top of that, we have uh, a KVM that is enhanced for real-time workloads with real-time uh, enhancements that provide low latency and low jitter. And built upon that is a virtual switch, which enables us to give uh, a DPDK-enabled virtual switch that gives us the ability to go up to 20 gig of line rate including for uh, small packets by just dedicating two cores per socket. This is the compute node platform. And this software is part of the Helion carrier grade distribution. So there's the OpenStack components on the left and the middleware, which forms the, uh, I like to think of it as the glue logic and the monitoring logic that 
that looks at all the different services of OpenStack, that looks at all the services that are running on a compute node, and does the fault management, performance management, image and software management, as well as reporting to provide a high availability framework. So the middleware plus the OpenStack core components along with the compute node software forms what is called as the Helion carrier grade. <clears throat> now on top of this, you can run VNFs that are built on any of the um, standard well-known guest operating systems. And they can utilize either uh, standard Linux drivers, whether it's uh, a Word I.O. or whether it is a accelerated virtual NIC called AVP, which gives you a higher throughput uh, in, in, the, in the VM, as well as uh, gives you the ability to do queuing on a per VNIC basis. So the enhanced networking capabilities and performance is available for the guest VMs to include just by uh, including a kernel loadable module, which is a very uh, uh, a simple and, and quick process that does not include uh, you know, a lot of code compilation or code changes. And the kinds of applications that we are seeing um, uh, our customers being interested on, on for this platform is the, is the very uh, standard VNFs, the virtual EPC, virtual CPE, uh, as well as some of the uh, non-traditional ones that I would not have expected, uh, which is IVR uh, and uh, some of the uh, other voice processes like voice, voice applications like Volti, right? So this is, the, this is what forms the Helion carrier grade architecture. <clears throat> now, uh, peeling the onion a little bit more, uh, in terms of the different components, I mentioned about the KVM. The KVM layer forms a very important aspect of the compute node, and that's because if you do not do any optimizations at the KVM, as you can see with the red uh, chart, or the chart with the red dots, uh, the, latency, uh, the latency interrupt is, uh, the interrupt latency is all over the map. With the optimizations that we have done in the KVM layer, we are able to reduce the latency and also keep them tightly packed towards the lower edge of the graph which means that you have a very consistent and low uh, latency and low jitter. This is very important for uh, applications like IMS, uh, Packet Gateway, Cloud RAN, et cetera. On the data plane, the other important uh, element is the virtual switch. It's called the accelerated virtual switch. It is built on Intel DPDK. Uh, it provides the ability to do 20 gig of line rate performance at uh, 256 bytes and up, and a little less than that at smaller package sizes. This, this uh, allows you to uh, be operated using an ML2 mechanism driver in OpenStack Neutron. Uh, and you can get the benefits of AVS, whether you're a standard VNF without any of the AVP functionality that I talked about earlier, or the VNF utilizing any DPDK or not, irrespective of which you have the ability to plug into AVS uh, using legacy applications or applications that are modified. This is very key. Now, I, you've, you've heard me talk a lot about virtual switch, and some of you may be thinking, well, what about uh, SRIOE? Do you support SRIOE? Absolutely. So we do not have any uh, religion or camp when it comes to SRIOE versus AVS or virtual switch for that matter. We support both. Uh, we support the orchestration of SRIOE and uh, we are actually dedicated to um, look furthering uh, the other functionality around SRIOE that is not available in the first release with most uh, distributions. <clears throat> From a switch standpoint, uh, some of the numbers to keep in mind are, like I said, 20 gig of uh, line rate traffic with two cores. This, this is uh, very important also, uh, uh, not just from a throughput standpoint, but also the efficiency in utilizing the cores. Why is that? If you, t if you take a kernel-based OVS, it, it eats up a lot of uh, cores just to get a, a amount of bandwidth that uh, you would need to just process a two million package per second VM. So in, in this benchmark example, I have three VMs. Each VM 
requiring 2 million packets per second throughput. And with kernel OBS, we find that um, I have to set aside 20 cores. So that's most of all the cores that are available in a two socket machine. And uh, after using uh, three VMs, each using one core, I'm practically left with nothing. So the efficiency of uh, the virtual switch is, is very low from a hardware utilization standpoint. With the AVS, we have the ability to get 40 million packets per second just by setting aside four cores, and you have 20 cores left to utilize for your VNFs. So your, your hardware dollars go a long way uh, to run your actual workloads or your VNFs. There's a 7x, approximately 7x uh, improvement of uh, a VM density per, uh, per blade or per server. <clears throat> Um, so, to, shifting gears a little bit away from speeds and feeds, which is all very important, but I, I, I promise that I'll talk about high availability and, and uh, the management aspects. So, uh, starting from making the whole installation process being very easy and simplifying the configuration, we, we, we've looked at how do you install the control plane in such a way that there's no single point of failure. And how do you recover really fast if there was a failure in the control plane? So the control node architecture is one of the key areas of, of uh, enhanced high availability for this product. Also, we look at what uh, mechanisms do we have to detect fast failover or fast uh, detection of a hardware or a virtualized element, whether it's a virtual switch or the QMU itself. Similarly, uh, how do you detect and uh, recover VMs that, that, are, that have failed or that are non-responsive? And the, uh, also, how do you do orchestration? Because the orchestration through heat is somewhat limited when you talk about enhanced platform awareness. This is, again, you will see another area of uh, enhancements in this product. And uh, also the standard OSS and BSS integration that telco care about. <clears throat> If you look at the numbers from a um, detection and failure detection and recovery standpoint, we, we, we've been able to achieve 500 milliseconds of um, uh, failure detection on VMs, whereas with uh, you know, non-modified standard uh, uh, distros of Linux and OpenStack, you, you see that you will uh, have a greater than one minute failure detection and recovery times. Similarly, for compute node, we're in the sub-second range uh, and control node failure, sub 10 second range, uh, and uh, live migration of DPDK applications is possible. It's actually not possible with most uh, versions out there, uh, as well as failure of uh, network components in the, in the OpenStack uh, architecture is, is in a sub second time frame. So these are some of the very important aspects. Uh, if you think about how do you enable high uh, levels of service availability, and how do you do things like auto evacuation on failure, or how do you do uh, hardware services uh, without bringing down the entire uh, v you know, VNF service? How do you do uh, uh, upgrades and maintenance of hardware? These are some of the important aspects that we think are important to uh, achieve those ends. <clears throat> Uh, from an uh, OpenStack orchestration perspective, uh, heat is the uh, area where we have focused on. The enhancements that we have made uh, in this area are to basically utilize the uh, NOVA scheduler enhancements and the enhanced platform awareness with regards to NUMA node, with regards to uh, ability to use CPU pinning, and how do you do uh, auto scaling in this particular situation by looking at statistics of utilization of network bandwidth or CPU uh, utilization. Um, some of the en other enhancements are uh, you know, pure bug fixes because uh, he we found that heat was pretty buggy. Again, uh, this is where reality is different from uh, where things are. And that's, that's an area where we have uh, you know, made sure that this is deployable as a product. <clears throat> 
Silometer is um, another area of enhancement for performance management aspects. Uh, there, there were most of the areas of enhancements were in the uh, network statistics for the virtualization uh, layer, whether it's the virtual switch or whether it's the virtual NIC. And then uh, we made sure that these are available to uh, northbound OSS collectors using telco type interfaces, uh, uh, as well as available through SNMP MIBs and TRAPs. Uh, and available through REST APIs as well as uh, the Horizon uh, UI. <clears throat> Scheduler enhancements is another key area. Uh, we look at uh, the VNF requirements. VNFs require to be pinned to a CPU. They require to be aware of a NUMA node. This is important to uh, guarantee performance. Uh, and uh, the, the, the NOVA scheduler has to be made aware of these uh, when, it's, when it's scheduling resources. So uh, along with a detailed system inventory, the NOVA scheduler is able to utilize this uh, information combined with uh, uh, the, the templates in heat to do the proper scheduling of VNF. So at the end of the day, while we are making all these in investments and changes, that enable OpenStack to be production ready, we're, 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 we're making sure that we are doing this in a fashion that enables us to make the changes go back into upstream so that there's no ender lock in and we're not uh, trying to uh, you know, create a proprietary version that uh, essentially becomes another VMware. That is not our goal. Our goal is to take OpenStack, make it better, make changes to it that enables you to uh, uh, push back those changes upstream as well as use some high performance components that are outside the realm of OpenStack, whether it's a carrier grade Linux or it's a carrier grade uh, KVM and virtual switch. So bringing the combination of those two components and then having a middleware that's, that's monitoring all these components, creating the tie-ins between the performance that's gathered the fault information that's gathered, and then making intelligent choices about, or policy-based choices about evacuation, live migration, et cetera. So this is really the crux, at the crux of uh, what Helium Carrier Grid is about. And uh, again, as I mentioned, it's very important for me to, re to restate this. Uh, uh, thanks to the, uh, the presence and the leadership of HP in the OpenStack community, uh, I don't see, and none of us uh, at HP believe that we will be hindered in uh, fostering the changes that we are making in this space to enable uh, NF, uh, this version of, the, uh, of uh, Helion to be uh, production ready. We should be able to take it upstream with the help of our community. Um, and the, what, what will not be part of OpenStack is, 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 for example, Linux is not part of OpenStack, so we're not saying that we will push the carrier grade Linux into, into OpenStack. It is already part of a carrier grade spec. So whatever is part of the OpenStack projects, any changes and enhancements we make there will be uh, pushed upstream. We will also be actively participating uh, in, any, uh, in incubating new projects for NFE or, or uh, blueprints, uh, as well as collaborating to existing blueprints, helping them make better, helping them implement. Um, in, 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 as we have done already with other uh, uh, projects and use cases. So that, with that, uh, I come to the end of my presentation, and uh, I hope we have some time for questions and answers. Sure. <clears throat> There's a question out there. So if you have a question, we have a mic over here, or I can bring the mic over to you if you'd like. So along those lines, I'm very interested in AVS and especially the performance that you showed up there. Is that uh, an open source project that you guys are contributing back upstream? And if so, into which, which project would that go? AVS is not an open source project. However, we are closely monitoring the user space OVS uh, to see where it goes um, and from a feature functionality, time to market, uh, performance aspects. Yes. <clears throat> Great, any other questions? One of the mic. I, I appreciated your statement that you were trying to push everything that was appropriate back into OpenStack. 
Could you be a little more specific on what's proprietary that you plan on keeping? I guess AVS, it sounds like, is something you're keeping, maybe some of that middleware. What, what's proprietary that, that's going to stay proprietary? Sure. So in, in reality, you know, I, it, it is about whether is it, is it open stack or not. So the open stack projects, Nova Neutron, Keystone, Center Horizon, Glance, Swift, uh, Ironic, these are the, any changes that we make are going to go back upstream. Uh, whether it's uh, uh, a, a AVS, that, that's not an open source project, so that's handcrafted to get the most performance out of two cores of CPU. So that, that is not going to go back upstream, as you pointed out. Uh, the, in the middleware, the HA, uh, the HA management framework, there's no open source project for it, again. We're participants in OpNFV. We're participants in uh, the regular OpenStack community. And as we, have, as we are noticing, th there's no HA framework component built into the OpenStack project, right? It is maybe being driven through OpNFV, and we will look at, uh, hey, is there an OpNFV framework that's truly open source, that's ready to be deployed, and that works really great with those numbers that I've shown, at which point, you know, we are going to obviously not want to carry the burden of implementing things ourselves, and we'll want to adopt the uh, open source components. So essentially what we, where we are is we are kind of ahead of the market. Um, I've seen some um, blueprints today in OpNFE like Doctor and uh, there's a HA framework. So these are, these are in the early stages. We're going to monitor as well as contribute, right? HP is a founding member of OpNFE. And uh, you know we don't want to be uh, carrying our private baggage forever. If 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 it makes sense for us to drop it today, we will drop it. Uh, where we notice uh, the industry is is that or the product uh, technology is that it's it's not ready for prime time deployment. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. So the, uh, the KVM uh, accelerations that you've done are those. Uh, centered around particular architecture, are they vanilla generic? Are they things that could be pushed up into the into the vanilla Linux stream, or is that not appropriate? I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. I'm not the subject matter expert on KVM, uh, but I believe that we have contributed uh, through the help of our partner Wind River some of the changes to the KVM layer upstream um, already. I don't know the latest snapshot of where. Uh, it is, you know, have 100% of the changes gone upstream or not? I, do, I don't know that yet. Yeah. <clears throat> so you mentioned that the VNF, the fault detection is about 500 milliseconds. Yeah. I still think it is too big, too long. Yeah. What causes that? And if we end up with the 500 milliseconds stuff, this will break down, right. period. Right. So again, this is the starting point for us. This is the V1 um, starting point for us. Exactly. And uh, some of the uh, numbers that I'm told by our architecture team, they, they come from the fact of uh, you know, how many endpoints you want to monitor and, and, this, and how, what kind of a database you know, structure you have in the back end and how big is your control node footprint. Are you willing to have a much larger cluster of control plane nodes if you want to you know, reduce the uh, granularity of the monitoring? So there's a lot of these design considerations. And uh, you know, as uh, all product, product management uh, rules say, the, what is your V1 requirements? You know, what is the best trade-off without uh, uh, making the uh, project be a, a you know a, a, a project that takes too long and, t and costs a lot? Th th those are some of the considerations we have at this point. Um. The, in the carrier grade, uh, you know, reliability means really FCAPS management, and uh, you are bringing all of that stuff into OpenStack management is a really great uh, thing to do. And there is a great demand for that. In fact, we have been re receiving a lot of requests in, in terms of how to provide that carrier grade uh, reliability, com uh, uh, performance, security management, and configuration management also. Right. So w one of the things I was wondering is, uh, is that itself is, looks like a management open you know, source type of a platform. Are you considering that as a special thing that you could start or whatever? So again, you know, I think this is an area that's ripe for innovation. OpNFE seems to have some promise there. Um, in fact, uh, 
uh, I don't, I'm, I'm blanking out here, but we were talking about uh, a, a way of having uh, a modular plugin-based architecture where you can insert uh, vendor-based FCAPs, uh, uh, industry, uh, sorry, commercial solutions instead of open source solutions, because open source solutions may not be ready, may not be scalable. So again, these, these are some of the mechanisms that the community has to look at as a whole. Uh, and we will foster that dialogue. We will foster that uh, work uh, to, the possible, to the extent possible as, as, a, as HP. Um, but I think the whole community needs to think about this. What about <coughs> FCAPs in, in OpenStack? And, and uh, how do we make it uh, go beyond open source, right? OK, so one more, one more, one more question. Nice, uh, Srikant. Uh, do you have a integration touch points with, uh, is it HP OneView by any chance? Do you have any touch points on how uh, you in integrate, if not monitor yeah, that's some a, of the elements in there? That's a great question, actually. I was kind of, at, that's what I had in mind when I was answering that gentleman. Um, and this, this is where we need to go, right? Uh, if you look at uh, vendors like HP, who also have another line of business in selling hardware, um, you know, they've spent a lot of investment making OneView uh, and such uh, software that, that does element management, fault management, et cetera, why not, be, why not have the ability to use them to, to better the whole solution, right? Uh, it could be a Dell's uh, management software, it could be Cisco's uh, UCS manager, so on and so forth. So whether it's networking layer, storage layer, or server layer, each one of them has its own FCAPS management software, and we gotta be able to figure out having that as a uh, uh, pluggable software to make the entire solution better. And some customers may say, no, thank you. We'll go with an open source based software. That should be a possibility either. Great. So where can people find you if they have more questions? OK. Thank you. Um, I'm at uh, shrikanth.kilari at hp.com. And I'll be somewhere around as well, if you can grab me. All right. Thank you so much. Another round of applause, please. Thank you.